McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 33 of this NHL 21 Edmonton Oilers franchise mode here on my channel and in oil country. Of course, I forgot that. It's been a while since we uploaded one of these, but today, guys, we get into the 2029-30 season. If you missed last episode, go up into that top corner of the video right up there. Catch up on everything you missed. Uh, this series is going to keep going for a little while. I know you guys are pumped about the Custom League. I'm still working on teams for that, um, but it will be out eventually. Of course, once we get this series done too, um, there is definitely a bit of work to be done still here but overall we are getting into more of the final stages of this franchise mode we're definitely right around halfway through the entire franchise mode save but more so we're almost through mcdavid and dry saddles careers they are starting to get up there in age there's no question about that and they are the main focus of this series again not much question there really mcdavid 32 years old now leon dry 33 he has dropped to an elite but he's still insane um so yeah those guys are the main focus of this team really once they retire or drop off or leave the team or whatever right once they start to decline that's when we will you know speed up the episode maybe do like an episode or a season per episode kind of thing around there and uh just you know kind of grind out the last bit of this series so it would be another 10 episodes or so but really i'm gonna grind through try to get one done every day here or so and you know along with the custom leagues because i know you guys are really enjoying those players too but yeah that is the plan with this series anyways last episode we got through the off season had a pretty fantastic draft overall not gonna lie we had a lot of good players such as uh, Boris Koroliuk, Spencer Roach, uh, Tommy Nidamaki. And it's funny because you look at the uh, Bakersfield Condors, and that team has actually featured quite a few of those guys already. So Spencer, Spencer Roach is in there. Uh, Carcillo, who we got a couple years back, we're looking to potentially promote if he can grow. And Altshuer Nidamaki, those two guys. Altshuer was a steal. I forgot about him. He looks fantastic. So uh, we'll see what he can do. Um, but looks really good as a 19 year old and him paired with Nidamaki should be a great defensive pairing and then of course we got Coral Uke down on that bottom pairing because he needs some experience still but uh but yeah that's kind of the state of the team right now the Oilers look really good and I've got all my scouting done so we're gonna sim to the regular season here all right guys so before we jump into the season let's take a quick peek at uh the draft class coming up here so you know mainly elite players not entirely sure to be honest if uh Darren Old is going to be a franchise player or not. We'll find out, but uh, obviously we're not interested in him right now. We are definitely more so just uh, looking at what else is available later on in the draft because, you know, steals can really uh, make or break a team. As far as not paying high value for great prospects, that is always kind of the key with franchise mode here. And uh, we'll see if we can, you know, kind of stick to that or not. Only one or two players here really with good system fits so far or good ETAs. That is always a, uh, oh my god, NHL ready Halvardson. Um, please scout this guy again. He looks really good, but yeah, that's just always the key to franchise mode here. Uh, this guy should be interesting. Ernesto Binnington, um, five-year ETA. I doubt that, but okay. Um, anyways, guys, I'm kind of getting sidetracked here from the point of this episode. This episode is going to be featuring some of, you know, McDavid and Dreisaitl's last seasons here. Um, you know, probably going to be more so leaning towards some of their last like highly productive seasons i think that's more the terminology i'm looking for because you know these like our main guys here mcdavid dry settle have been scoring at ridiculous paces for their entire career uh, i actually want to go check in the record book because i think mcdavid's up there now um as far as just 100 point seasons goes uh, he's definitely in that conversation for sure so yeah, if we go to just the NHL in general, obviously, you know, Caden Primo and Alex Taylock aren't in there. Crosby and Carey Price, I would believe. Um, Ovechkin got 899. Jesus. Okay. Um, but I believe it's right here. Yeah, there you go. Connor McDavid, 1100 point season. So he's just four off of Gretzky, which is pretty ridiculous. Passes Mario Lemieux all time. And he's only 32. Um, so he's definitely got some seasons left. Anybody else in here for the Oilers that, you know, is currently playing? I don't think so. Um, and we go to the franchise here for the Oilers anyways. 
McDavid and Dreisaitl's got their names all over these points here. Like, they're getting close anyways. So Dreisaitl's in there for uh, games played. McDavid is still like a 1,000 assists, or not 1,000, uh, like 200 assists away from Gretzky. Um, Dreisaitl is about to pass Kevin Lowe for all-time seasons if he plays one more. Uh, Par Backer's got only nine shutouts, apparently. Um, but he could definitely surpass that by the end of his career, too. And McDavid leads the Oilers in goals with 597. So definitely still a lot of goals there for McDavid. Um, if he plays another six seasons or so and has a lot of 50-goal seasons, he could be in that conversation for, you know, all-time scoring. but Or all-time goal scoring, I guess. But he's still got a lot of goals. Um, if we look at McDavid dress, wow, look at that drop-off, guys. Did you see that? I don't know if I just showed you the lineups or not, but Moroz took a plus five drop. Pulyarvi took a plus five. Yama with a plus, or minus three, I guess. These are all minus three for McDavid, minus none for Dreisaitl, interestingly enough. Um, but if we look at his point totals, he's up there too. Uh, 1,212 points in 1,129 games. He's got 509 goals as well as an Oiler, so he's been up there for sure. He's been scoring a lot. Um, how many 100-point seasons has he had? He's been kind of off the mark over the last couple of years, but he's had one, two, three, four, only four in his career, but he's always been right around, if not over a point per game in his entire career. So yeah, Dreisaitl's been amazing. Um, and then Connor McDavid, obviously, is Connor McDavid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's doing pretty good, I'd say. So... You know, two seasons where he was just off that 100-point mark. So he could have 13 already. Like, he could be right there with Gretzky. But it is what it is. He's got a great line around him and that good chemistry boost. And uh, we're going to get into the simulation here. I've talked you guys' ear off long enough. So let's get into this. Uh, I think I'm just going to do a 50-50 today. Normally, I would do quarter, 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 quarter. But I think we're just going to do 41 games, see how the Oilers are doing at the halfway mark, and then do the second 41 and uh then wrap the video up from there for the most part so we might get into a playoff series too if things go well but uh, i'll be back with you guys at the halfway point of the 2029 slash 30 nhl season so guys at the halfway point of the season the oilers are 27 10 and 4 having a bit of a weird year honestly because dry sidles leading the team 20 9 goals and 54 points in just 41 games. Oilers are sitting third in the Pacific, but the Pacific is also by far the best division. Anaheim and Vegas are both ahead of the Oilers with the 1 and 2 seeds in the NHL after half of the season. And the Oilers are sitting third in the NHL, but also third in the Pacific. So, very strange year overall um, by the looks of it. The Coyotes are the worst team, and uh, it's been a weird year. Like, just not not going as we would normally see from the, this Oilers team. But McDavid's still over a point per game. Eve's over a point per game. We got four guys over a point per game here, two from our top two lines each. Um, so not exactly surprising, but this guy's going off. Roberto Wyman in his rookie season here, I believe. Yeah, because he played three HL seasons, scored a ridiculous amount of goals. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's having a really good rookie year, I have to say. 33 points in 41 games is better than a whole bunch of our veteran guys here. So, Ribeiro, not bad either. Uh, 26 points in 41 games as a rookie, as a 20-year-old. Um, but he was putting up absurd numbers as well as uh, he, when he was in uh, junior, so not the most surprising. And then for goalies, 22 out of 34 for Parbacker would put him, let's see, for the entire league, puts him second place. Okay, so pretty good there. Um, Carter Hart, the only guy having a better year than him. And here we go. That is the point total. So Riley Oda is just going off as a 2 8 forward. Don't ask me how, but he is. Um, Patrick Line and Calgary's having an insane year. And Russ Coe, again, teams that are all below us are, are bolstering players that are just insane. I don't get it, but that's how it works, I guess. Um, Austin Matthews, another guy I haven't really featured much here in this series, but he is he's sick. He's having a great year, so... Yeah, yeah, um, right up there with Dreisaitl and a bunch of other guys. So yeah, I uh, I really think that the Oilers have got a lot of good players here. There's no question about that. It's more just a matter of are they going to be able to put it together as a team here and kind of battle out the Pacific as really the Battle of the Pacific is taking place right now. You look at all the teams and it's just like, wow, wow, the uh, the West is strong right now. So 
yeah, no real question about that. Top, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Jeez. That would be um, eight out of the top ten teams are from the West. And then out of those eight of ten, um, five out of ten are in the Pacific. So, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. No, six out of ten are in the Pacific. That's insane. So, yeah, um, pretty strong division this year. Haven't really seen that happen before, honestly. But uh, we're going to sim the second half of the season. Things are looking good. And uh, I will be back with you guys to wrap up the 2029-30 regular season and uh, then hopefully get on with a playoff matchup here too if, you know, Edmonton season goes as planned. All right, guys. So to end off the 2029-30 season, the Edmonton Oilers go 54, 17, and 11 for an amazing 100 and I think it was 11? No, 119 points. McDavid has a 50-50 season. What a year for the guy. Wow. Um, and that 119 points puts the Oilers square in first place of the regular season and completely with home ice advantage heading into the playoffs. But yeah, just a really good season overall from the Oilers here. All right, guys, so let's get through all the stats here as far as teams and everything go. Um, McDavid with the 110-point season leading the way, but let's check out the whole league first. So 54, 17, 11, first place in the Pacific and the entire league. Anaheim, Vegas, Calgary, Portland, Vancouver. Oh my God, what a terrible way to end the season for the Vancouver Canucks. Oh man, Vancouver fans, I actually feel for you on that one. Oh my goodness gracious. And San Jose, 97 freaking points. 97. And they finished seventh in the division. You're kidding me, right? Oh. Oh my god. There wasn't a team under 85 points in the division. Let's see where the 16th place team, 90. The 16th place had 90 points. Los Angeles, oh my goodness, man. Every single team in the Pacific finished within the top 18 in the league. What a stacked division. Holy crap. And we still finished on top. That's how good this Oilers team is. Anyways, I will digress, but four 100-point scores on the Oilers. <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> and 250 goal scores too in McDavid and Dreisel. Wow. Just wow. Never mind Yamamoto plus 40 on the year. And how about Robert Wyman with a 59-point rookie campaign at 22 years old? That is pretty fantastic. Um, so, yeah, lots of really good seasons here from the Oilers. Uh, 45 wins. Let's go. That has got to be. That's up there. That is up there for wins in a season, man. Like, Parbacker is definitely up there as all-time. One of the all-time best seasons for a goalie. So is Carter Hart, of course. <laughs> Backer's not even going to win the Vesna, man. Because he's younger. He has more time. So Carter Hart's going to get it. That's just, of, of course, he was in Vegas too. Of course. Of course. Of course. Now I'm hoping he doesn't win. <laughs> God damn it, man. Okay. Rookie skaters. 59. That's what you like to see. Roberto Wyman. But Jaden Janes was, or Jaden Haynes was up there too. Jaden Janes. Yeah, nice. Um, any top picks? No, not really. Wow. Um. Yeah, Brian Pedersen was, or Peterson, however you say it, had the best season. But we had, yeah, 50-point rookie season, man. That's still fantastic for Ribeiro. I'm so happy for the guy. Um, so, yeah, we had two out of the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, top six rookies. So that's, yeah, that's pretty good. I would say so. Um, and then for all league scoring here, McDavid just gets beaten out. I, I focused on Matthews for a reason, guys. I had the feeling he could come in and, uh, yeah, pull that off. But, I mean, four Oilers in the top. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four out of the top eight are Edmonton Oilers. You know the team is stacked. Um, 
Only thing we didn't check was defenseman, and that would be Quinn Hughes with 74 points. I mean, McCarr's up there at 62 still, but he is also 31 years old now. So yeah, he uh, he will probably start to drop off here fairly soon, I would assume anyways. And uh, yeah, I think Hughes is going to get the Norris this year. It might be Darlene still, but uh, let's just, I want to just see who the previous award winners were too. McDavid got the Art Ross point. Ekblad, Ekblad, okay. Um, so Makar and Darlene have both won it before. Point got a bunch of them, Dimitrakos, Line A, yeah, of course, Consumites. Oh, that one pissed me off. Okay, so, I mean, I think a lot of our guys have definite uh, cases. I mean, obviously Matthews is going to... Ooh, actually, one other thing, guys. I did not check the goal scoring at all. Um, 54 is up there, but I think Matthews had 58, so... Let's just double-check. No, he had 53, so McDavid could be... Nah, oh, Debt pulls it off, and Co too, so I mean... McDavid was close, but not quite there, man. So, yeah, Georges Audette and or Georges Audette and Roscoe both just taught McDavid there for the Nor or for the Rocket, but that's okay. I mean, I would have loved to see McDavid win a Rocket or two, but uh, it, it is what it is. So, let's see where the playoffs put us. Obviously, we can have a ridiculous matchup, but I would love to play against the Minnesota Wild, preferably over the Portland Pylons. So let's see how this bracket goes. Um, are we going to get the wild? I would love to, um, but we shall see. So, You're kidding me. We were one game off. Sorry, we were one game off from winning or from getting our uh, management goal there of 55 wins. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we got 54 and lost 28 and 11 in overtime too or extra time. So we got the pylons. Um, the Jets get it easy against the wild. And then the mix and match is Calgary and Colorado. So let's take a look at Portland. Obviously, they had a fantastic season still, and they are looking to potentially upset. But they, I, I honestly don't think their team is as good as they performed. So let's see. Portland. No, they're pretty good. They're a pretty good team still. Got to give them that. They pff, Douglas should be playing in a higher role, but that is uh, that is what it is, I guess. Husalius is a nice steal. Same with Strebeck. Phil Modine or Maldin. Their defense is non existent. Yeah, yikes. I mean, yeah, Phil, Alan Downey is the only really good piece they got there. Man, if Tristan Jari gets injured, they are done. They are so done. Okay. They got a guy named Brain here. Joel Brain. Nice. <laughs> Oh, that's funny because my my brother is named Joel and he is quite smart. So Joel Brain, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, guys, that is the team we are looking to face off against here. And uh, well, I mean, let's get into it. It hasn't been that long an episode and uh, I think we could definitely get a quick playoff series done here too. All right, guys, so I got the headphones on here now. You can kind of see them there, but uh, yeah, we're going to get into this. So we're just going to advance day by day. I'm really hoping this could be a quick series and that we can just wrap things up nice and easy. But then again, the Oilers were 4-4-2 and two heading into the playoffs. So we'll see. Um, first game here on home ice, 5-1 win, huge win there. Uh, great start to the playoffs too, as William Eves leads the team with two goals after just game one. So good start. Definitely. All right. Heading into game two, the Edmonton Oilers will win that one 5-4 in a much tighter, more nail-biting type game. Um, but up to nothing, taking the two games on home ice, that's what the team's expected to do. Kale McCarr has got an average of two and a half points a game right now in the playoffs with two goals, three assists for five points after just two games. And also he's in on 50% of our goals. So that is insane. But uh, you got to love that a defenseman's playing well in the playoffs. So heading into game three in Portland, 4-2 loss as the pylons bounce back on home ice. The Flames look quite dominant right now. So do the Leafs, both up 3-0. Minnesota up 2-0 against um, the Jets. So maybe I'm glad we didn't get them, honestly. Even series for uh, Anaheim and Vegas. And then even for Ottawa, Florida, Carolina, Washington and New Jersey is up 2-1 against the Rangers. So, game three, can the Oilers bounce back and get a win here? Um, also, sorry guys, I did not show you our AHL team at all, but by the looks of it, they are up 2-1 right now against Colorado, which is always a good thing. So, you never know, there might be an upset there. Anyways, heading into game number four here? Yeah, game number four, 
the Oilers lose again 3-1. So we got an actual series on our hands now as Portland performs on home ice. So that is a little worrisome, definitely, uh, that Edmonton dropped two in a row. But we weren't playing that well heading into the series anyways. Minnesota has been hot. Um, Toronto drops one there. So Minnesota actually the hottest team in the playoffs still, which is weird to even think about. But um, heading back to Edmonton for Game 5, this is where the Oilers need to step up, not score only a goal or two. Um, obviously having the fans should help, but we'll see what happens. And game number five is a 5-3 win as William Eves gets up to over a goal a game here. Again, with six goals, five games, seven points in those five games as well. And Edmonton just needs one more win here to move on, but looks like nobody's going to have a clean sweep this year, or in the first round anyways, as uh, every series is going to at least five. But by the looks of it, Toronto's moving on, New Jersey's moving on, Calgary's moving on so far. And let's advance another day. All right, uh, so the AHL playoffs are over, and the Condors move on. John Beach having a good season so far, or good playoffs anyways. Um, but that was a tight one. I think that one went to five games. So anyways, um, I think we're going to at least slow sim this, uh, see what happens here in Portland. Portland's had the home ice advantage in their arena, no question about it. But oh, Pulley already right off the bat. I love that. One shot, one goal. First period, it's a 1-1 game, though, so Joel Armia gets the goal back there, ties it up. Portland really bounces back after that first shot going in, but uh, yeah, yeah, we got a 1-1 game after the first. Second period, it's a 2-1 game for Portland, and uh, really, this could go either way, so let's just slow sim through this, see what happens here, see if Edmondson can get back. I mean, even on shots, you oh, heart scores there for Portland, so this could kind of send it to a seven game series to be honest here unless oh Edmonton does get one back Roberto Wyman you gotta like that and uh let's see if Edmonton can get another here in the last eight minutes or so right there with Portland on shots just gotta keep getting those shots and uh it doesn't look like it's really happening here for the Oilers they've gone blank and that's gonna wrap it up they lose game six three to two in Portland, oh goodness, we've got a seven-game series in round one yet again. This should be interesting to say the least, but man, this could be such a huge upset here. Edmonton should have finished that series off in five or six, and it did not happen. So let's see. Oh, Simon Robertson goes out with a mild concussion. That sucks, but it happens. All right. So here we go, guys. First period of game seven, Edmonton versus Portland. Will the President's Trophy winners can conveil? What's the name? Prevail. Sorry, that's the word I'm looking for. I don't think conveil is even a word. Yikes. Um, but let's see. First period, 1-1 as guards opens the scoring for Portland, but Dreisaitl ties it up just four and a half minutes later. Edmonton gets a shot, 10 to 7. Second period, it's a 4 to 3 came as the scoring goes off. McDavid opens the period, then Billy Douglas scores, then a hard scores, so Edmonton was down there quite a bit um down three to one or three to two i guess yeah three to two uh keith spencer gets a tying goal and then five minutes later rusco makes it a one goal game as uh portland and edmonton are tied 20 apiece going into the third so let's see what happens here there's been some crazy simulations here before and uh really this could go anyway so edmonton with the home fans behind them hopefully things can go well but Again, this is CPU versus CPU. We will see what happens. All right, so here we go. Edmonton versus Portland. Third period, game seven. It comes right down to the wire. And McDavid starts off by winning the faceoff. Edmonton on the power play, too. So we will see what happens here as a battle goes by the looks of it Portland's way. And Hirvonen going to turn the puck over as Edmonton just has more skaters on the ice. But uh, Dreisaitl going to pick it up, get moving here. And he's got space down the wing, gets kind of cut off, but picks the puck back up, finds Paul Yarby in the slot, save, and no rebound as Jari covers that one up. So should be an interesting first period or third period here, in the first couple minutes as uh, Edmonton is on the power play. So let's see what happens here. So minute and nine seconds left should be an interesting one, but faceoff going to go to Duckless, and Butcher is going to clear that one all the way out of bounds, or out of bounds, out of 
the offensive end. Pull going to pick it up, get moving here, hits Eves in stride, William Eves with some space, gets past the defender, looking for space, finds McCarr, and Kale McCarr ties the game on the power play. What a pass by William Eves to find McCarr cutting into the high slot, and he just picks that corner out on Jari. Wasn't much chance there, really, and uh, Jari does get beat glove side quite handily by Kale McCarr. So uh, we got a four-all game, Edmonton right back in it, and uh, the experience really showing through here as far as just having slightly older, slightly better players, and uh, yeah, just right in the slot, not much room there. And uh, yeah, this is a tie game now, so there you go. Yeah, that was a uh, pretty... Pretty strange, but it looked quite easy. I thought uh, maybe it took a deflection, honestly. I couldn't tell because it looked like Jari just tried to catch it like right here in his chest and missed it. So 4-4 four, four game, 41 seconds in. Let's see how the rest of this period goes. Eve's going to pick up the puck as McDavid wins the faceoff. Eve's finds McCarr. Kale McCarr again gets laid out in the slot this time, but big chance rebound, and the puck is bouncing around right in front here. My goodness, Edmonton buzzing right now. Now, good defense again by Lambos as he's going to look for some space. Carson Lambos up to Matthias Ottison. Ottison looking for space. Passes to Wyman. Roberto Wyman out in front to Lambos, and he scores! Carson Lambos slap shot from the high slot, and Edmonton is up 5-4. to four. Great transitional play. Great setup as the Oilers enter the zone. They find the high guy there in Carson Lambos. So coming in at a very key time, Roberto Winan finds the guy in the high slot, and Lambos just rips that one, man. That is a great shot. Takes the hit mid-slap shot, too, but still finds the open net. And, uh, yeah, Armia just absolutely laid him out, but what a shot that was. Carson Lambos showing his offensive prowess here, and uh, really just a great goal overall. So, yeah, wow, what a, uh, what a play that was, and we have got a 5-4 hockey game now. So the puck going to go to the pylons here, and that's turned over, and now good play here in the neutral zone as the pylons break in, pass in front, Parbacker with the save. So halfway through the period, Edmonton scoring two goals here in the first half to regain the lead as I don't know if they even had it for that long in this game, but uh, Connor Bell going to take the face off and lose again here. Sprong in front, great save by Backer again on the backhand there for Sprong. Sprong going to find a guy in front and what a goal that was. Who scored that? Nick Ehlers. Bit of a strange goal as he shoots from the one-timer pass coming across off the backhand. So a really strange one overall, but... Uh, doesn't matter as the Oilers have given up an almost instant goal here. Backer just misses that one, and it's a good shot by Nick Ehlers, to be completely fair. So a 5-all hockey game. This should be interesting here in the last half of this period. Gets through, dumps the puck in deep. Dreisaitl trying to beat Voloshenko, can't do it. And now the pylons break out. They've got some space here as, uh, I don't know who number who Salius breaks in. Pass in front, great shot, great save as Parbacker did shut the door on that one. Only 35 seconds left now. McDavid trying to cut through the neutral zone. He turns the puck over. And Edmonton goes back on defense. Pass in front. That should have been a goal. What a save, par backer. Now McDavid in front looking to cut through the neutral zone. Finds some space. McDavid hits Pugliarvi in stride. Jesse Pugliarvi shot save. And 18 seconds left. McDavid really trying to force the play. Does make a play, but just couldn't be finished by Pugliarvi there. And uh, that should have been a goal right there. A great save by Parbacker. Could have been the series if that had gone the other way. Now, 18 seconds left. Let's see who wins the draw here. And that goes to Russ Coe as looks like Portland's going to have one last break here. Ehlers going to hit Voloshenko, who hits Sprong in stride. He's got space. Sprong out in front to Ehlers. Ehlers finds Voloshenko back to Sprong. And this is coming right down to the wire here. Chicharin going to find Ottoson, who's hopefully going to break out. And that is it for regulation. We are headed to overtime. And let's see what happens here. This is uh, definitely nail-biting as far as a series goes right down to overtime of Game 7. Should be an interesting one. So heading into overtime, this is it. Next goal wins. Sudden death elimination. Let's see what happens here between Edmonton and Portland. So face-off in the Edmonton end. Let's see what happens here. 
Can McDavid win a draw in the defensive zone? He cannot. That goes back to the point. Hronik shot in front. That is blocked. And Eves is going to cut back. Almost lose the puck, but instead find Pugliarvi. Jesse Pugliarvi cutting out wide. Looks to get by Butcher. McTavy got stuck in the net on that play. And now good hit there by number 42, William Eves. But Edmonton turns the puck over and... Ehlers is going to break. Butcher out in front. Can't find a shot. He's going to send it back to Sprong, who gets hit there. McDavid going to lay out Ehlers and uh, make the play. Now pass in front. Three on two developing. Pugliarvi out in front. Tries to hit McDavid instead of Eves, who is wide open. Sprong looking to get the puck forward. Does that so by passing to Fiala. Over to Hronik. Hronik now going to Russ Coe, who is poke-checked at the line. Great play there by Makar, who comes streaking down the wing. Pass in front. Oh my gosh, Lavoie. Great save there by Tristan Jari, as Lavoie could have ended the series there. Now Coe coming back the other way. Poke-checked again by Makar. And uh, Yamamoto trying to decide where to go with the puck. Yamamoto finds Makar, who is hit. But now Dreisaitl streaking down the wing. Leon Dreisaitl is in. Pass in front. Save. Rebound. Oh, my goodness. What a couple saves by Tristan Jari there. As Yamamoto and Dreisaitl tried to finish it off. Now Byfield cutting in. Looking for the shot. Misses the net wide. And that is going to go out of the zone. Back down the ice the other way. Yamamoto. Pass in front. Lavoie. Raphael Lavoie misses the net. Lavoie back in front again. Over to Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl. Over to time winner what a cycle of play oh my goodness that was absolutely fantastic and Edmonton will be moving on guys this is why I love commentating is because I'm not the one making the play I'm just watching it and uh wow I hope you guys enjoyed that run of play I know I sure did and uh that was just fantastic in overtime great effort by both teams puck going up and down the ice both ways and Edmonton finally finds the back of the net so guys from being down four to three heading into the third period Edmonton has a barn burner of a seventh game here in round one and uh just has a fantastic finish there really uh coming back getting the game in hand and then having it tied up late by Portland there was really quite an interesting finish and then the Andre Seidel obviously with the OT winner looks like we will take on either the Calgary Flames or the Vegas Golden Knights next I would assume Vegas but you never know uh could be Minnesota too so let's see Carolina's still in it too let's see what happens with that series that should finish up here right away and round two we'll see the Oilers take on the Vegas Golden Knights and who else moved on there Carolina did so that will be coming up next episode, and we'll see if the Oilers can make it past round two for the first time in almost four years, because it has been a rough stretch here for the Oilers in uh, the playoffs, as they have not been able to get anything really strong going as far as the playoff run goes. We'll see if this uh, if this Vegas team is good enough to shut an Edmonton team down again. I mean, it will be an interesting series either way. I don't want to say Edmonton has the better team because Carter Hart could just stand on his head and shut out the Oilers. That is a very real possibility at this point. Ethan Bear on that team too, so interesting. But uh, that's the team we'll be going up against next episode. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure that you go down below. Consider dropping a thumbs up on the video, especially for that dry saddle OT winner. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't or try to hit 1,200 subs. I know you guys can do that. And also, feel free to leave comments on your thoughts for this series. And don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you never miss when I upload. But that's going to be it for me. This is Ekanios signing out. And see ya!